वेलकम टू एटीसीएम द एमरजेंसी मेडिसिन चैनल टुडे आई विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग अ केस ऑफ 55 फाइव ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल पेशेंट हु इज अ नोन केस ऑफ रोमैटिक हार्ट डिसीज स्टेटस पोस्ट पी टी एम सी परक्यूटेनियस माइट्रल ट्रांसलूमिनल परक्यूटेनियस ट्रांसलूमिनल माइट्रल कमिशोरोटमी पैरोक्सिसमल ए एफ करेक्टेड टू नॉर्मल साइनस रिजम पोस्ट पी टी एम सी डिस्लाइपीडीमिया वॉज अपेरली नॉर्मली नॉर्मल एंड डूइंग हर रूटीन एक्टिविटीज एट टेन ए एम विच वॉज वन आवर थर्टी मिनट्स बैक वेन शी हैड this arthria and sat down and she was not able to speak and move her right upper and lower limb on a 10 second initial assessment her airway was patent no pooling or secretions breathing was bilaterally equal and with chest movements with air entry bilaterally equal no added sounds respiratory rate was 18 per minute saturation 97% on room air circulation heart rate was 114 per minute regular bp was 160 100 millimeters of mercury at this point of time 218 gauge iv cannulas was secured ecg was ordered disability gcs was e4 v1 m6 uh, pupils were equal and reacting to light uh, she had a angle of mouth deviation to the left uh, right human facial palsy the power was right upper limb and lower limb was uh, right upper limb was 0 by 5 and right lower limb was 1 by 5 left upper limb and lower limb was 5 by 5 Exposure GRBS was 140 and temperature was 98 degree. Adjuncts of prim- primary survey ABG showed no acid base disorder. Uh, her sodium was 127. Uh, potassium was 3.2. ECG showed a normal sinus rhythm with LVH changes in V4 to V6. Heart rate. Heart rate. Heart rate was 114 per minute. Okay, and the uh, BP just made me on. BP know. was one sixty hundred millimeters of mercury. Okay, so uh, now we, here we have a patient with what? What is your clinical suspicion at this point? This point, uh, we are suspecting uh, acute uh, CVA, mm-hmm. probably uh, cardiomyopathic mm-hmm. etiology. Okay, and uh, time of onset? What is the importance Di- of time of onset? Uh, if it is within four point five hours, uh, we can do thrombolysis. If it is four point five to six hours, uh, we can do a mechanical thrombectomy. Mm-hmm. If it is from six to twelve uh, hours, then we have to check for if it uh, if it uh, includes a large vessel, then only we can do a mechanical thrombectomy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, how do you like ask the what are the key things you ask to identify the time? Uh, to identify the time, like uh, when is her be, uh, normal? baseline neurologic status mm-hmm. at what time when what she was doing prior to that and if it was a sudden onset and when did they notice that when uh, the uh, bystanders noticed that her last neural status was normal that is taken as the uh, time of onset mm, okay okay fine so basically the last time where she was doing normally normally okay and what is wake up stroke uh, wake up stroke uh, in that uh, we when the patient uh, wakes up from sleep she will be having the disability so we can't comment uh, the time when it has happened so we'll take the time when she went to sleep uh, when she was found She's normally found on normal, baseline on baseline last, last. okay that okay fine so here you are talking about airway in a stroke no uh, leave this case generally what can be the airway concerns in stroke airway concerns uh, if the patient uh, is having a bulbar palsy uh, and all uh, she will have a chance of aspiration okay so we have to protect the airway in that case okay then that is one uh second thing thing will be sensorium sensor. right again it may not be a bulbar okay. problem it can okay. be just okay. that there is a massive stroke and gcs is low and because of that the patient is not able to maintain his airway okay uh any other things which in uh, primary survey which probably needs to be addressed like not in this patient but usually what are the what is the other key thing which we need to address in acute stroke Be the blood pressure. Ah, right? blood pressure. We'll come Control to the details of, blood of management of blood pressure later. Okay, and also the heart rate here. You told probably definitely in a tachycardic range, uh, uh, but normal sinus rhythm. Normal sinus rhythm. Okay, fine. Can me. Uh, and sugars, sorry. Sugars were one forty. One forty. That normal. is again important. Oh, any patient presenting with pneumonia and weakness, we have to uh, check for the sugars. Also. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, coming to the secondary survey, a fifty-five-year-old female patient who is known case of rheumatic heart disease, status post PTMC. Uh, paroxysmal AF to uh, normal sinus rhythm post PTMC and dyslipidemia was apparently normal doing her routine activities at 10 a.m. Uh, when she was ironing her clothes uh, she had acute onset of dysarthria 
and sat down and then she was not able to speak and move her right upper and lower limb it was acute in onset and patient had maximum deficit at this at that time there was no history of any seizure epo- episode uh, noticed or any ataxia giddiness or chest pain palpitations uh, on examination uh, she was conscious uh, and uh, no palorectal cyanosis clubbing uh, lymphadenopathy or peripheral uh, pitting uh, pedal edema was no- there in systemic examination cns examination uh, she was not able to speak to the questions but she was able to obey commands she was having a motor aphasia mm-hmm. power was uh, 0.5 in right upper limb and uh, 1 by 5 in uh, right lower limb mm-hmm. uh, left side it was upper and lower limb was 5 by 5 there is also hypotonia present in the right upper and lower limb Her reflex was absent in right upper and lower limb angle of mouth deviation was there to the left and uh, the, she was able to close her eyes uh, with good strength uh, so it showed a right uv and facial palsy the rest of the system was normal mm-hmm. uh, we did a, a ct brain plane initially and it showed uh, no ic bleed okay. we calculated the nih score and it was okay, it was okay. we'll, uh, just wait there. from a paramedical perspective what is the recommended way of assessing for stroke Uh, paramedical we can uh, do the uh, fast face uh, every for face uh, facial drooping or uh, and facial asymmetry uh, then arm weakness mm-hmm. then uh, speech abnormalities and uh, time yeah. okay fine so you have done a quick neurological examination and yes. you have a strong suspicion of a, uh, a stroke yeah. and then you went out with a ct brain plane ct brain plane okay so what are the options imaging options for a patient presenting like this and why you chose plain ct in this patient uh, since uh, she was having a typical presentation we wanted initially to rule out a ic bleed mm-hmm. so first was this patient on any anticoagulation or anything no no she was not any anticoagulation okay mm. and uh, we ruled out ic bleed uh, in that case if we uh, calculate the nhs score if it falls within the range we can uh, plan for thrombolysis or okay. else uh, we have to take a mri uh, stroke protocol and uh, check for where the infarct is Okay. Any you want a better answer? Sir, as this is within the window period, we require faster imaging. Okay. And uh, CT plane brain would uh, allow us to rule out the hemorrhagic component. If there is no hemorrhage and N9 score is above five, the indication is to thrombolysis. Okay. A little more better. So basically, timing is one important thing. Okay. Patient coming with the similar complaint, but after the window period, mm-hmm. naturally your choice of imaging is going to be different. Even post the thrombolytic window, even if it was. post 4.5 hours then probably we will definitely aim for a mri stroke report no and in our center it, you can go with a ct with ct and you ct and you okay fine yeah so uh, the the crux is the initial choice of imaging will depend upon one uh, the timing of arrival and institutional capabilities okay because the ct and you thing why i told you if, uh, if the institution has abilities for thrombectomy then definitely that comes in otherwise it is not okay fine hmm. uh, then we calculated the nhs score it was 13 okay you uh, can elaborate on the nhs score nhs score uh, there are 11 components in it okay in that uh, first component is divided into three uh, first is the level of consciousness okay then comes the uh, questions we will ask two questions uh, month and age mm-hmm. uh, and then we'll uh, check third for the uh, we'll assign her a task just to close her eyes or uh, grip her uh, grip her hand mm-hmm. and then we uh, second we'll check for the gaze mm-hmm. there's in gaze palsy mm-hmm. third we'll check for the visual uh, uh, visual uh, field of vision loss or anything mm-hmm. then we'll check for the facial palsy mm-hmm. then uh, fifth one is the motor of the arms initially okay. and then motor of the legs mm-hmm. then seventh one is the uh, limb ataxia okay. eighth one is sensory okay. component uh, yeah. ninth one is language Mm-hmm. 10th one is dysarthry and 11th is extinction and in in attention okay so total score max score will be max score will be uh, 42 okay and uh, usually uh, you what's a kind of like is there a kind of uh, subjective thing where less than this is called as a mild or ma- uh, minor stroke and something with an yeah. upper limit where which is called as a major stroke uh, less than 5 is a minor stroke more than 25 will be severe very severe stroke more than 22 and there are certain kind of societies which say 0 to 3 is minor and 0 to 5 so anything less than 5 you usually classify it as plus five as minor mm-hmm. fine so you have a uh, what's the score for this patient uh, 30 13 yeah okay so 
So we plan oh, for IV uh, thrombolysis. So basically, we called in the stroke team at that point. Yeah. Right? Okay. Stroke Fine. team, and uh, we plan for IV thrombolysis with recombinant tissue plasminogen activator. We chose alti altiplase here, and uh, here the dosing was uh, 0.9 mg per kg, mm -hmm. and uh, it came out uh, around okay. uh, 45. So you have decided for IV thrombolysis. Yeah. Okay. What are the indications and what are the contraindications? Uh, indications uh, are that if the uh, if once we have ruled out the we have ruled out for uh, IC bleed and it is ruled out. Ruled so you are out. talking about the contraindications. Okay. Any okay. what are the other contraindications? Uh, contraindications then uh, if she had any ischemic stroke within three months mm -hmm. and uh, or any other known malignant neoplasms mm -hmm. or known uh, structural cerebral vascular uh, lesions mm -hmm. or any suspected aortic dissection. Mm -hmm. uh, active bleeding or any diathesis, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, or any significant trauma, facial or head trauma within three months. Mm -hmm. And uh, relative contraindications will be uh, use of any anticoagulants, mm -hmm. she's on any anticoagulants, mm -hmm. then uh, if she has any uncontrolled hypertension, if it is more than 180, 110, you have to control. What is the? Yeah. 185, 110, then you have to control the blood pressure before starting. Mm -hmm. Then uh, if the age is more than 75 years, also is a relative contraindication. Okay. So, the, the thing is that you have to control if it is more than 220 by 110. 110. Your target is going to be, less you can start one, once it is less than 185, 110. 180 by 110. 110. Okay. Fine. So, what is the agent of choice in, in acute stroke BP control? Uh, a BP control, uh, we can use uh, uh, labetalol, mm -hmm. uh, 10 mg to 20 mg uh, mm -hmm. over a boas bolus over 1 to 2 minutes mm -hmm. Good. and you can repeat every uh, 5 minutes. Okay. So, usually it is uh, first two doses you see for adequate response mm -hmm. and then uh, repeat as, as need be. Okay. Fine. Any other agent? No, the, we can use uh, nicardipine or clavidipine. Okay. Nicardipine yeah. IV if it is available, what is the usual dose? Nicardipine. Cardipine is usually 5 mg per minute. Mm. Okay, you can increase it to 15 mg per minute. Okay. Then, so you control the BP. So, what's your objective in controlling BP in acute stroke? Like, what's your target? If it, here, uh, we are assuming that it is a thrombolytic candidate. If it is a non thrombolysis candidate, is there mm. any difference? Yeah, in? there will be, uh, we have to just uh, keep it below 220, 120. Okay. So, our target is going to be less than 220, 120. And there, what is the percentage of reduction you are going to aim? 15% reduction over in 1 hour. 24 hours. Uh, 20 hours. 24 hours. Okay. Fine. Of systolic BP. Systolic. Okay. So, continue. So, that is with the BP control, we told about the uh, choice of agents also. Fine. That. And then Any other contraindications? Uh, then. There's a lot more, no? One yeah. important thing we'll to remember is that if there is any arterial or venous puncture in a non compressible site. So, in hospital strokes, that's going to be something important. Okay, the patient has undergone a uh, procedure with an arterial puncture at a site which is non-compressible and then he develops an uh, acute stroke. Then mm -hmm. naturally he doesn't fall into the category of uh, IV thrombolysis. Okay, fine. Anything else? Uh, GI bleeding uh, within uh, 21 days also is a contraindication. Okay. So, now you have decided for uh, IV thrombolysis. thrombolysis. Any other agents which is kind of as reasonable recommendation now other than alteplase? Multiplace, 10 active place. Dose? It is 0.25 mg per kg, max dose of 25 mg per kg. What is the advantage of 10 active place over multiplace? Multiplace long. Bolus. So here you are you are you are going to give it as an infusion. Mm -hmm. 10 active place is an injection of a you calculate the dose and give it as of a bolus. That is kind of the advantage. And there are some studies which kind of shows equivalence. Okay, fine. Then here we had uh, forty-five. Uh, so here we uh, we went ahead and gave uh, multiple. Multiple. Okay, TPA. Fine. Ten percentage in the uh, for one minute and okay. uh, ninety percentage in one hour. Okay. Then, then uh, after that, uh, there are we regularly monitor the BP uh -huh. and NHS score was assessed hourly. Uh -huh. uh, the patient also developed uh, mild bleeding in the oral cavity during the course, uh -huh. and uh, we had uh, put in uh, adrenaline packed gauze. And the bleeding was controlled after that. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, after uh, three, four hours. So, we, did the uh, initial labs uh, come by this time? Do you, do you have anything on the platelets, APT, TPT, INR, and all? Yeah. Are, are there any? INR was normal, it was 0.92. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And uh, platelets were also uh, normal. It was uh, 1.7 was there. Mm -hmm. uh, APTD was center? No. Yeah, APTD was also center. It was also normal. Mm -hmm. okay. control. Then, then uh, after that? Uh, when we reassessed the NIH score after 4 hours, uh, she started to, she was able to start talking again and uh, it was uh, 10, NIH score was 10 and then she was admitted under uh, stroke medicine. Okay, fine. So, uh, and BP was monitored yeah. uh, throughout. Fine. So, uh, this is, so you have, you have talked about uh, alteplase or either alteplase or alternativeplase. Any other drugs which will come into the management of stroke, maybe after your... If you have thrombolysis, no need of anything, no. So, there again it divides into a thrombolytic limb or non-thrombolytic. If it is not thrombolysis, then only you are going to give aspirin within 24 hours. If it is thrombolysis, you can wait for 24 hours for your aspirin. And again, uh, minor strokes, there are some, some literature to support that there is role for dual antiplatelets. So, the aspirin plus stroplogrel for initial 21 days. That has proven to decrease. What? It's more like a... Prevention of recurrent stroke okay. with another 90 days. That's all it has been proven yes. to do. Okay. So, it's more of like secondary prevention for newer stroke. It is not specifically treatment for the current stroke. Okay. Fine. So, that is with uh, aspirin and globodogram. Anything else? BP control. BP control. Okay. Fine. Then, what yeah. are the stroke interventions? We just passingly mentioned about it, no? So, yes. and we have if the uh, patient has crossed the, uh, the after 4.5 hours, for from 4.5 to 6 hours, we have to plan for a mechanical thrombectomy. Okay, for that, you will need a different imaging, no? Yeah, for that, we will need a CT brain plus CT angio. Okay. That's good. Fine. And so, if, angio, what are we looking at? Uh, we are looking uh, for a major... Uh, you mentioned, no, in between large vessel occlusion. Yeah, so, uh, that is what we are looking at, no? Where we are looking for a major occlusion, vessel occlusion, which can be kind of... Uh, thrombus can be retrieved using a uh, stent. Okay. Uh, Naveen, anything about aspect score? What is aspect score? Aspect score is the radiological scoring system on the CT to see the media MCS uh, involvement, the MCR tree involvement okay. especially. We divide the at the uh, basal ganglia level, at the plane of the basal ganglia level, we divide it into like the parts containing chordate, putamine and internal capsule and insula. We give these all four areas, four areas, one, one point. Okay. And in the lateral side, we divide it into prop, like PCA territory, MCA territory, and like PCA territory is M1, M2, M3. Mm -hmm. And if you go one plane above, mm -hmm. uh, corresponding to M1, M2, M3, we again give M4, M5, M6. Okay. So these are all 10 areas together. Mm -hmm. If, uh, depending upon the infarct area, mm -hmm. we minus that point. Okay. So, a normal person will be having 10 points. So, depending upon the total number of areas involved, we minus it and then we say the score of the aspect score. Okay. If it is like uh, more than the 7, then it is li involving like a, uh, it can be thrombolyzed. If it is exactly. less than 7, then it will be a like major vessel in fact. Yeah. So, basically the utility is going to come in. This can kind of predict the outcome of both thrombolysis and mechanical thrombectomies. Okay. okay. So, what are the complications you expect in a large MCA infarct? He was just mentioning about a MCA. large MCA right. infarct, there can be hemorrhagic transformation. Okay. So, it can lead to something called as malignant malignant transformation, transformation of a stroke. Where the large volume, again within 48 hours, usually patients can deteriorate. So, what usually comes in at that point in large MCA infarct? What intervention can are usually done? Large that is where your, your surgical team comes in. Okay. Okay. So, that is one situation where probably we might even consider for an empirical early decompressive craniectomy. Within 48 hours, you see that the patient is, uh, condition is deteriorating. You have an uh, uh, initial imaging showing large MCA infarct, follow-up imaging already showing increase in intracranial pressures, midline shift setting in. Probably an early decompressive craniectomy mm -hmm. will be indicated in those kind of patients. Okay. okay. Then, what else? What is Lacknar infarct? You have heard that term? MCA branch. Yeah. One of the branches of MCA. Yeah, it's usually, it is. it indicates it indicates deep perforator vessel because we are we talked about large vessel occlusions mm -hmm. and all. It could be large vessel occlusion, it can be small vessel occlusions, it can be lacnar. Lacnar is basically usually we see it in basic ganglia mm -hmm. or brainstem areas. So, it is deep perforator vessel occlusion is, is usually what is termed as lacnar mm -hmm. and Okay. And there is another also another type of pathology. We usually classify it as what? 
stroke broadly broad classification uh, cardiomyopathic uh, thrombotic okay. there is this MRI. entity of hypoperfusion related stroke also where it could be systemic hypoperfusion which can lead to stroke so this uh, all will come into this classification only okay mm -hmm. right so in cardiomyopathic what will be the difference in management apart from what we have discussed uh, cardiomyopathic we have to uh, do a initial echo to find mm -hmm. out to mm -hmm. Uh, echo or uh, ECG should be done to find out uh, if there is any arrhythmia or any clot forming in the mm -hmm. left atrium. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll also have to. Uh, Management phase, what is going to differ? Anticoagulation. Mm -hmm. Anticoagulation. So, that is one situation started. where you'll, you you probably even uh, during the in hospital stay, heparin is justified. Heparin is and post discharge or upfront, we can directly start the patient on oral anticoagulations. Mm -hmm. One of the new anticoagulations can also be started. Okay. Okay, then what else? I think we missed in discussion. DVT profile axis. Also okay, again, better than patients or stroke. Then surgery we discussed, secondary profile axis we discussed, cardiobolic. Nothing else now? Okay, right. okay. Thank you. Thank you.